wait. Listen, wait. we in the Duncan Music Lounge, 105.3 The Beat, iHeartRadio. We are glad that you're here tonight with us. You Thank know? you for Thank you so much. Uh, I got a chance to hear you live a couple of months ago. Uh, blew the entire place away. And uh, of course, everybody in here wants to get to know you better. That's the reason why we have you here for the meet and greet. So I wanted to make sure that these listeners and your fans got a chance to, you know, get to know who you are and what you've been through and what got you to this point. Is that all right with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Thank y'all for coming out. <laughs> Anything you want to start off with before we get going? Absolutely not. Anybody you want to? <laughs> anybody you want to shout out before we get going? <laughs> well, thank y'all all for coming. So listen, thank you guys once again. So let's jump into it. Let's let's talk. Let's talk. All right, so listen, uh, first of all, you know, I know you're a singer and you're a songwriter. You know, you've been inspired uh -huh. and many other things. Do you want to add to that uh, to that list? Singer, songwriter, producer, artist. Artist. Yeah, that's Producer. <laughs> no, no producing. Um, I want to get into, you know, instruments, guitars. Mm -hmm. I just bought a guitar, so hopefully, you know, I can say guitar soon. You just bought the guitar? Just bought it. Like, how soon? <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday. Uh, it was like... I'm gonna say like two months ago. Okay, it was like four months ago. But you Maybe just like five, pulled, you just pulled still, it out the box. Two but still, months I just ago. haven't had time to sit down to get to it. But yeah. <laughs> nah, that's all good. I understand. <laughs> now, uh, reading about you and getting to know you, you're from Memphis, am I correct? Yes. So, just growing up, I know when when I was listening to music, Memphis, I never really heard too many R&B singers from Memphis. Not saying that you did, you guys didn't have them out there, but I was, it was more so known for like the, the rap scene, Three Six Mafia, you know, and all of that. But when it comes to singing, you know, like how did that shape you as an artist growing up in Memphis? Like, you, was it like deep rooted or was it just a, the Baptist church? Like, what was it? I just feel like if you know about Memphis, you know about the singers. Um, even if they're not like known singers, just the talent in Memphis alone is impeccable, I feel like. Um, I feel like we have like just crazy singers out there. Um, so just being around all that soul, I feel like they had a big impact. Um, we got a shout out to the Al Green. The we have the K Michelle. We have um, honestly was Aretha Franklin. I feel like she is from South Memphis, but I think she drove through. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, we're gonna okay we're gonna not pay that attention. But um, but yeah, I just grew up around a lot of soul, a lot of blues, a lot of yeah. Um, I forgot what I was about to say, but it's okay. Um, just a lot of soul in the city, and I feel like that really had an impact uh, on me. So being from Memphis, like you said, and those artists that you named, did any of those artists inspire you growing up, or were they like, you know what, I want to do what they're doing, or I want to be able to get to where they are and take the torch a little bit further? Um, of course, like I said, Al Green, that's soul. Oh, of course. Uh, so a lot of stuff I grew up listening to, and just in general, like I grew up around, you know, a lot of women, first and foremost, um, and in my family, we listened to a lot of blues, a lot of that soulful stuff. So I just think I was just, it just was embedded in me just growing up, um, listening to old, I mean, not old. It's okay. You can say old. Listen you know what I'm saying? But just listen to <laughs> old real music. soulful nah. music. Yeah. So y'all get what I'm saying. Yeah. Music that just touch your soul. Uh -huh. Old soul music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm an old soul. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I, uh, also I know when you were young, you know, you sung at this, um, uh, program when you yeah. was a kid. Black History Program. Mm -hmm. Oh, Black History Program. Black History Month is next month. That's wow, right? Yeah. So t talk to me about that. Like, uh, tell them exactly how that panned out for you. Yeah, so I don't remember exactly um, why I was singing in class, but I was singing, like, with some other students. And um, one of the students ended up telling, she was my reading teacher at the time, or, like, my math teacher, I can't remember, but her name was Miss Sullivan, but she was also the choir director. So they end up telling her, they was like, oh, you know, Miss Sullivan, Justin can sing. Um, so she stopped me out of class one day, and I thought, like, oh, damn, I'm, I'm in trouble or something. Like, And she was like, you know, I want you to step in my room or whatever. So I came in. She was like, I want you to sing something for me. And I'm looking like, like, okay. So I sung, and she was like, you know, baby, you have a beautiful voice. And um, she said she wanted me to learn a song. She gave me Swing Low, Sweet Chariot to sing in the Black History Program. Um, and... I found out the story like years later when talking to my mom because I was like, you know, like, how did you find out I could sing? And she said that um, while I was up there singing on stage, now, mind you, I had a cousin that was already in the choir. But when I went home, like, I didn't say like, oh, ma, I got this song I got to sing. Like, because I didn't I didn't realize like, oh, you can sing and you're singing. I just, you know, that was you something know this she was told moment. me to do. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so my aunt had called my mom 
And she was like, hey, girl, I'm at the school. I want you to listen to this little boy singing. And so my mom was like, okay, cool. So she let her hear. And she was like, who is that, girl? He sound good. And she was like, girl, that's your baby. <laughs> and so, like, my mom, like, she told me she just busted out crying. She was at work trying to tell everybody, like, y'all, my baby can sing. Mind you, they don't even know that she, like, who I am or nothing like that. Um, and from that day, I just, like, you know, kept getting into programs, talent shows. Um, I started singing a lot at my mom's job. She worked in home health care. And they had, like, all these different, like, you know, events for the elderly, domestic violence women. And I just really, you know, just surrounded myself in that and kept singing and getting into plays and stuff. And, yeah, and we, that's how I got to this. <laughs> so was that moment, did you realize after that moment, like, this is what you wanted to do? Or was did something else take place where it's like, you know, I want I, this, I really want to sing? Because, again, like you said, at that point, it was just like, oh, I'm just yeah. singing, you know? So I really, honestly, I didn't have that, like, moment until I think, what was, the, I had a show in Rochester, New York, um, and it was right after I dropped the album, and that was my first time, mind you, they didn't know no other song on the album, but I had talk on the radio like a few months prior How old to, were you? Huh? How old were you at this time? I don't know, 2019, how old am I now? <laughs> uh, we, okay, I we, keep, we gonna keep it yeah, right there. Yeah, we gonna listen. <laughs> Trying to embarrass me up here. Um, I was young. <laughs> young. I'm still young. <laughs> but no, um, and so, you know, I'm singing like songs from the album, mind you. The album had just dropped and it was later on in 2019. And so like nobody really knew the album, but when it came time for talk and my manager, like he knew how the song was doing out there and stuff, but I don't know nothing about like numbers and like, you know, I, at the time. And like, he was like, you know, like they love you in Rochester. So when talk came on, I heard everybody just like, they went crazy singing word for word. It was a sold out show. Um, and that was a moment I was like, okay, like, I can really do this. Like, you know, I'm not on stage. I'm not singing covers. You know, I had just came from that. I was always on stage singing somebody else's song. So to be able to sing my music and everybody knew it word for word, that was, like, the moment for me. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> and, um, and it was just my mission. Like, okay, when I come back, I want them to know the full album. And the next time I came back... Sold out show, fire marshal called, all that. And oh, we gotta give knew. them a hand clap for that. We got the fire marshal <laughs> yeah. called, <on. laughs> and it was it was super dope. Um, so yeah. So again, I'm just going back to it because at that point when you did the program, you were seven, and now 2019 is when it clicked. Like, yeah. now I, I had always been passionate about it. Right. And like I always wanted to sing, and I always said like, oh, you know, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, but like I said, that was just really my moment where I was like, I knew that it, I was on my path, you know? Right. Because a lot of times I feel like, especially trying, I feel like I commend anybody trying to take on like artistry or like trying to pursue whatever your dream is really, but t for artists mm -hmm. and stepping out there on faith and like, you know, trying to like, I don't know, because there's so much going on. You got, when you're leaving school, everybody's going to college, everybody, you know, they know what they want to do or they have some type of path to follow. With artistry, you're just kind of like, whatever lands in my lap and, you know, I just have to pray and, you know, keep working and, um, wow, where was I going with it? Well, I'm <laughs> glad you, you're there because I was going to ask you, uh -huh. yeah, in, that, in that particular situation, you know how sometimes, and I think we all in this room can, uh, can agree to this, like you, you figure, this is what I want to do, like you said, I'm going to college, this is what I want to do. And then you find yourself being pulled into your passion, yeah. into your gift. So it's almost like, I want to do this, but God has a plan for you to do this. Yeah. So you find yourself being pulled. Did you feel that? Like, you would try to do other things. You was passionate about music, but like you said, it didn't click. Yeah, and then, you know, family. And then coming from Memphis, and, you know, I had a great upbringing. But, you know, like, sometimes, you know, it's, it's a struggle sometimes in, in black families. And, like, you know, um, sometimes your parents, they want better for you. They want you to do what the others haven't done yet. So college was like a huge thing in my ear. You know, I, I turned down a full scholarship, um, acapella choir. Um, but it was just because I knew that that wasn't me. That wasn't what I wanted. Uh, they were singing in different languages and stuff. And I was like, I can't, you know, just, I mean, it's, it's great. It's great. <laughs> but, you know, just being thrown into it and like it just wasn't right. Like I was sick every day, like in school. Um, and I couldn't figure out, I'm like, what's wrong with me? Like, I had a headache. I'm like, I'm like, I'm dying or something. Like, but I was really just sick because I wasn't, I feel like I, because I wasn't on my path and I wasn't following like my heart and what I wanted to do. Um, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. I understand completely. Now, again, just going back to what you were saying, you wasn't following your path. But now that you are following your path, 
you feel a little bit more free. The weight is off your shoulders. You feel like you made the right decision. Even those, uh, those people that were in your ear or the, your family members that were saying they want you to do something else. Because I'm pretty sure leaving college or le not taking that full scholarship, that oh, yeah. was a conversation to have. Oh, no, it was definitely, it was plenty of conversations. <laughs> uh, my mom was like, I ain't coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, I called my dad, and I was like, Dad, like, come get me. Like, you right. know, my mom said no, and I love my mom. Um, and, you know, I understood, you know, where it was coming from now that I look back on it. Um, but, you know, I had to prove her, and she told me, like, you know, she had a moment when she was at work, and, like, her coworkers were, like, super fans. And, like, she was just like, that's my baby, like, you know what I'm saying? So she called me and she was just like, you know, she had a moment, she was talking to her coworker and her co coworker was talking about quitting the job. And my mom was like, um, at first she didn't understand it. She was like, girl, you making all this, you know, da, 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 da. And then she sat and thought about it. And she was like, you know, my baby said the same thing. Like, this is just not what I'm supposed to be doing, you know? And yeah, I mean, I feel like it's worth it. I still have my days where like, of course I see the progress and that's why I thank God for like, he give me like bits and pieces at a time just to keep me going. Um, cause I still have my moments like where I'm like, you know, I hope that it's not all in vain or, you know, it just, I feel like I'm still just swimming and trying to like get to this moment where it's like, okay, I finally made it. Um, but you know, I'm grateful for it all. And I feel like, you know, it's working out. Oh, of course it's working out. That's yeah. why we in here, right? <laughs> it's working out. Now, uh, I know you said you mentioned the song talk. Everybody knew that particular song, and it felt good to have an entire uh, arena and people just singing it word for word. What's that process like now? Like when you're in the studio and you're writing, since that moment, is it like, you know what, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not just singing for yourself, but you're touching people. You, you, you're piercing that, that, that part of a person to understand it and, and be on, on your side of the pen, you know, to kind of get where you're going from. What is that process like now? So honestly, it, from my second album, um, I told myself like, I'm gonna go back to the basics. And when I talk about the basics, like with Red Room, I just vibed out. You know, I didn't have like a thought process. I didn't think about like, oh, are they gonna like this? Or are they gonna like that? It's just like, whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm dealing with, like just speak. Like whatever I wanna, if I wanna speak for my friend who just had this breakup and she don't really know how to da 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 da, like I'll take it, you know, and I'll put it into a song. So. Um, the process now is just, like I said, going back to the basics and just letting it flow. Like, you know, I feel like music is just language. Like, it's just conversation. So I'm just trying to get back. Well, not trying to get back. Well, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to say, keep that going. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just like the vibe. I don't really, you know, have a formula really, I guess. Well, I do in a sense. Um, I just kind of let my melodies. Okay, so me. I'm going to tell you why I asked that. <laughs> uh -huh. I interviewed um, LMA. Okay. And she has this, not a ritual, but she says she likes the studio dark. She has the candles lit. Oh yeah, you know, like yeah. what is that? What is that like? If some, if one, if you were to invite mm. somebody in here to the studio, what can they expect when they walk in there? To be hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I always have the heat on. Like okay. I don't know what it is, but it, it just puts me in my element. Okay. Not like a vocal thing. Like oh my, my. it's just like I don't know. I feel more in tune like with everything. I don't know. It's weird. Right. Um. But yeah, heat and just a lot of nonsense, gibberish. You hear a lot of gi gibberish, but that's how I record. I like to just like play. I mean, hit record and I just say whatever. It don't make sense. It may be like, yeah, don't make lots of money, and it's like I'll go back and like pin it all in. Yeah. So yeah. That's so and it. you're writing all of your music. Um, Red Room, yes. My Red second Room. album, I collab with a different, I mean, some different writers on it. Okay. Yeah. And now we got to talk about that second album, which is uh -huh. a lot of people in here. Look, look, look everybody shaking their head like, that's, <laughs> that's the one. So let's get into the Honest Project. Uh, now, wait, first, first. So did y'all find out about me through Red Room or Honest? Red Room. Okay, yeah. here I say Red Room. Okay, the song Talk? <laughs> Faithful, okay. Toxic. See? See? <laughs> Toxic. <laughs> so... You had some songs on Honest, mm -hmm. and I want to ask you about them. Okay. First one, Broken Hearted. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where were you at when you wrote that? Fun fact, Broken Hearted is a Red Room anthem that was initially, I mean, originally supposed to be on Red Room. Um, and of course, Lester, just like he made me put Red Room out, he made me put Broken Hearted out, because y'all would have never heard it if it wasn't for my manager. Shout out to Lester uh, Page. <laughs> 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 um, but... Yeah, I was in the same space I was, like, around that faithful time and, you know, deserve all those songs. And it was just a song that just didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut. But since mm -hmm. it made the cut, now you figured 
Well, you feel like, no, so let me ask you, do you feel like it should have been on the first project or it fit the second project? If I don't like a song, I don't like a song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't not like it. I, it's just, I don't know. It's just not my, one of my faves. Okay, so I got to ask about the last song, Monsters Don't Lie. Okay. Now, the title caught me. Then I listened to it. The, the title caught me, but then I listened to it. So I need to know where was that coming from? There was different pins. Um... And we were just bobbing. That's the best way I'll put that one. Uh, <laughs> you got to tell me a little bit more. <laughs> when I don't like a song, I don't like a song. <laughs> I'm trying I to, like, that's I don't the know the whole thing of being honest. That's why the yeah. album is called Honest. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it wasn't a fave of mine either. But, you know, um, I worked with a dope writer on that. And, yeah, it was just, like I said, we just got in the studio and vibed out. I kind of let her, like, lead and get her creative juices out and just take me to a place that I normally don't go. And yeah. Now she is not the monster you were talking about, right? No, she's just the writer. Okay. <laughs> you yeah, sure? yeah, yeah. She's so just the, the, the project, honest, you know, you, you hear the growth from the first album. Do you feel the growth? Like, do, do you honestly feel mm -hmm. like you grew? Even though you don't like some of the songs, but do you feel yeah. like you grew? Yeah, I mean, because it pushed me. It pushed me. So I learned not even just like, you know, with the album, but just like working and networking with other people, you know, figuring out, you know, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. It was definitely like an album that I feel like. Uh, pushed me creative, creatively and also just, you know, made me grow a little bit and just learn more, you know. Um, but no, I definitely, definitely grow because it's a lot of stuff, like I said, I wouldn't normally do and I just tried it. So, you know. Was it more so experience that you were going through or is it just more so of just not personal growth, but like mm -hmm. artistry growth? Artistry growth, yeah. Artistry growth. Mm -hmm. So now that you've experienced a whole lot more, this next project, Oh, yeah. This next tour. <laughs> yeah, the next project is already starting off amazing. I'm just, you know, not throwing it out there like that. But <laughs> you like I'm these songs? About but do yeah. you like these songs? That's yeah, I love them. <laughs> yeah, I wanted them to come out before I wanted these, the honest to come out. But, you know, somebody. Right. You know. <laughs> I mean, I ain't trying to, you know, throw them so, out there like that. I'm, we'll wait to the end to do this part. Uh -huh. Let's talk about this cruise. Oh, yeah. Do so, y'all know about this cruise? Wait, what y'all y'all wanted to go? It's still happening. Oh, okay, it was cutting it. Okay, got you, got you. Well, if y'all are available, it's September. Oh, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> something through the something. I think it's the seventh through the twelfth. No. Okay, seventh through the twelfth. Um, seventh through the twelfth. And yeah, but the information is on my Instagram, and if we'll give you information before we leave, if y'all, you know. So I, I want to know about this this cruise. Like, what's going on on the cruise? Um, so all I know is I'm performing one night. We're doing like a, a J How meet and hang. So basically, it's just a time for me to just really like interact with my fans, and not just like in settings like this or like at a show trying to get a picture or something like that. You know, really hang out with me. You know, get a little intoxicated with me. You know, just really vibe out and have a good time. Um, but I'm excited because I've never been on a cruise. I don't know if y'all ever been on a cruise or not, but I've been on I've been on three cruises now. <clears throat> the first one was um, Did you get sick? No, honest the sec the, the the third time I almost I thought I did. Because I went on a carnival. I thought I did, I ain't gonna lie to you. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I the the last cruise that I went on was the Disney cruise. Shout out to iHeart. Now I don't know if it was just because of all of the kids. Uh -huh. That was, was on the, the ship. And the then kids. when I got back to my room and things just started, you know, uh -huh. but I I don't have problems. I love water. I'm a Pisces. I love water. Okay. But <laughs> one one morning I woke up and I just wasn't feeling it. Yeah. And I just didn't go back out on the balcony part. But I had a great time. But I don't know if, again, if it was just the kids that was running around. Yeah. I ain't no kids with me. I'm there for work. You know? Kids will do it. Kids right. Do so it. you just see all these people ripping and running around. And then I get back <laughs> to the room and I just got super dizzy. And I was just like, all right, when when did this happen? But it could be age, too. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Now, let's... Um, Get into, I want to ask you a question because I know you're still, like you said, you feel like you're not where you want to be. Yeah. But but I'm where I'm supposed to be. For you sure. are Exactly. Yeah. You're where you're supposed to be. Right now in this moment, what mark are you feel like you're putting in, in, in into, this, into this world right now when it comes to R&B? Honestly, what I always pray for is to make moments. You know what I'm saying? 
I always think about like, you know, my favorite songs or like my favorite songs that my parents listened to. I remember like when my mom was cooking when she was listening to a certain blues song. Um, you know, you just remember moments and that's what I always want to do. I always want to make sure that, you know, I do that for my audience and my fans and just give them something to hold on to and make, you know, music that's going to stick around, build a fan base that's going to stick around for a long time and yeah. That's where you at? Yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> If you had one word to describe your artistry, what word would that be? <laughs> like one word, okay. Um, one word. Passionate. Why? Because I'm passionate about <laughs> everything that I do. Um, it's real heartfelt music. Um, I don't know, I love making people feel, you know, whatever that may be. I'm sorry, I love making people cry. I love making people happy. Um, and I just know what music does for me. And yeah, I, I think it, I would say passionate. Let me ask, what's some of your, name? throw two songs out there off, off the Honest album that you guys love. And you felt that. Why you love me? Okay. It's change, you said changeable? Unchangeable? Unchangeable, okay. <laughs> See, so you making them, feel, no, not a snap. <laughs> <laughs> but you, <laughs> but you're making them feel, and I, and I ask that question because I, w what you're doing, you're, you're doing the right thing. So don't get discouraged. I don't want you to feel like you're, you're just swimming and not going nowhere in place. You. Trust your prayers, keep going, and you're covered. Yeah, you know? appreciate it. So some of your fans have wrote some questions down. Okay. So we gonna uh, dig into this box. <laughs> don't y'all be nosy. <laughs> Wait, the oh the paper. Oh yeah. Gotcha. So, Shout out to the Duncan Music Lounge, all right? Okay. So you get to pick the question out of here. I'm going to read it out loud, and then you're going to have to answer it. Okay. You sure? You want to just pull it? Okay. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. No, These are your questions. Go ahead. He nervous, y'all. He nervous. <laughs> all right. How do you feel about going on tour with K. Michelle? Ah, oh, I'm so excited, y'all. Um, it's crazy because I had just, like last year, I was, I think I was talking to my manager and I was just like, you know, we need to be on somebody's tour. Like, you know, I'm ready to, I don't know. So I'm just super excited. And plus I love Kay Michelle and she's from Memphis. So I just think it's like a special love there automatically. And I'm just excited um, just to get the experience, to get the exposure. And yeah, I'm excited. Now you gotta When's the tour? When the oh, the tour starts um, <laughs> February 23rd. I think you already know. <laughs> February 23rd. <laughs> and it's like 22 cities, maybe. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of cities, but I'm excited. It's going to be dope. Well, you should be excited. Yeah. Let's go to the second question. Y'all got y'all tickets for that tour? Yeah. <laughs> what is your inspiration for your music? I tell you what, damn it, you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go ahead, ask, ask a question, go ahead, ask. All right, I love you, baby, come to Georgia. <laughs> Another reason why I'm loving my new album already, because we get, you know, we get a lot of that, but I couldn't put some of those songs out. But um, no, it's, and this is going to say that, but it's still, I'm a toxic king, so it, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever make a song where See it's there. just completely See? See? <laughs> in love, because I don't believe that, like, I don't, I, don't, I don't think life is that simple, you know, I think it's going to always be up and down, it's going to always be more down than up to me, but, um, <laughs> but um, no, to answer your question, I write from all, like, different, so a lot of it, comes from me, a lot of it could come from a conversation I could have with a friend. It could be something my mom said about her husband, like that she didn't like, you know, like love you in the morning. I always love to tell the story. Um, my mom and her friend, the lady was overdoing her hair or whatever. And uh, my mom's in the you know, kitchen cooking and she was talking about her husband. She was just like, you know, girl, I love my husband. She was like, you know, but he gotta get it right. And I'm just listening, being nosy. And she was like, you know, I love how he treats me. She was just like, but he forgets, like, you know, to still treat me like his girlfriend. She was like, I want him to, you know, yeah, you can make love. And she was like, but at night, like, you know, put it down. And I was like, that's so dumb. I mean, that's so dope. And I just kind of, uh, <laughs> And I just kind of went with it, and I, I literally started playing with, you know, Love You in the Morning, You at Night, and that's where the song came from. Most people were just like, you nasty, but I'm like, it didn't come from me. Like, 
<laughs> yeah, she she inspired the whole thing, and I thought it was dope because it speaks to a lot of relationships, and especially like you know, as you you know grow and you're growing older together, and like some people get complacent, some people forget to make love to their partner, and you know, date your partner. I guess I don't know nothing about it, but. I'm just saying, you know, some people forget. So I Toxic just, in line. <laughs> Toxic in line. I'm just saying, Let's get you to know. this next question before he start lying some more. <laughs> Go oh, it's, see, it just makes sense for me to want to read it, you know. All right. What inspired you to write Why You Love Me and Ghost? Who wrote that? Okay. <laughs> what inspired you? I mean, I'm trying to sound like the nice person. <laughs> but I mean, I, yeah, I'm just, you know, I have my flaws. Um, and Ghost was actually about a few. <laughs> it wasn't for me. It was I was writing for a friend, you know. She got ghosted really, really, really bad. <laughs> you laughing too loud. You like making it. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, that's the song about you. <laughs> yeah. That's why you walk, that's yeah. why she walked to the back. She did, she, she should. <laughs> but yeah, she got she got done real bad. You know, it was it was a bad time. Tough. Yeah, so I just took from that. But why you love me? Um, I mean it's pretty, you know, self explanatory. Or you because it was happening to you, or you were the one doing it. And see, I was the one doing it. And that's where that's see, where my see that's what I'm saying that's where I'm kind of twisted because like I'll write a song and then it'll be like so like so sad and I'm the one it's like I write I can write from the other person's perspective or like the person that I'm hurting or the you know I'm just twisted. Now like y'all gotta go back and listen to these songs. It's yeah, just kind of you know, figure this out. And I see comments and they like who hurt you? But I'm like I'm doing it. I'm you the know one what doing the hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's cool. Um, I think you just might be the first artist to actually admit that you are the one in the wrong. <laughs> all some songs. Not I'm not always. Uh, Once toxic. Majority. Always toxic. <laughs> <laughs> y'all give it up for Jay Howe one more time. Thank y'all. Um, thank you. Uh, for coming out to the 105.3 The Beat, Duncan Music Lounge. Of course. Thank y'all for having me. The best part about it is you're the first artist. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> History. <Yes. laughs> you're the first artist for The Beat, and uh, we definitely want to make sure that your fans stay tapped in. If you wanna, I'm pretty sure they already already follow you, but they want to know where they can find the unreleased music at. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> but no, make sure you follow me on Instagram at jhowellmusic1. That's J-H-O-W-E-L-L -L music and the number one. My website, www.jhowellmusic.com. And yeah. <laughs> and it is time to meet and greet him. Thank you all so much for coming out. <laughs> Thank you all.